What's going on, everybody? This is James Grandmaster Facts Boyce, and you're here for another episode of the Facts Project. Today, very special guest. I'm here talking with Barney Smith. We are here to talk about Dadder Jokes, the second installment of his uh, comic book based on dad jokes. The first one was called Dad Jokes, which was brought out around 2020. And now we're here talking about Dadder Jokes, this second installment. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you for having me, James. I'm really excited to you know, be here on the Facts Project. This is amazing. Not a problem. Not a problem. Now, this is your first dip into Kickstarter. It is. So it's my first dip into Kickstarter. And, you know, just for, for your listeners and viewers to know, it's like it's funded. So I'm really excited about that. It's fully Absolutely. funded. Congratulations. Now we're hitting, now we're, now we're hitting, we're going for the stretch goals now. And I was very fortunate enough to, uh, as uh, as we mentioned before we went live, that I have my own podcast and I've been interviewing people that do Kickstarters all the time. So yeah, part of it was being selfish and asking them, how do you make a successful Kickstarter? What do you got to do? So mm-hmm. I was jotting down for the last few years, all these things that they say to, oh, you have to try this. You have to do this, do this. And I, I wrote all those down, James. So I knew. All right. So, so. You know, unless they're, you know, you know, f- filling me full of some, some, you know, hokiness. I knew I was going to, I yeah. knew I was going to do it right. So one of them is be, mo- well, the other thing too, is, you know, and we'll talk about it in a, in, in a couple of minutes is that I didn't have to pay for an artist. The biggest chunk that people have to do is they have to pay for an artist. I myself, I'm a, I am a cartoonist by trade. So I yeah. actually was able to do my own work. And as you say, it is. I consider it more of a graphic novel than anything else because it is the only book that I've ever found of dad jokes that actually is fully colored as well. So, cool. um, yeah, it's my first, you know, it's my first Kickstarter and it's like jumping in the pool. Once you do that, when you feel good, then you're going to be able to, you know, kind of get a, you know, kind of a name for yourself as a, um, as a creator and people know me a lot as a, as a, as a podcaster and yeah. stuff like that, but it's the first time I've been, people will. It's the first time I've been able to be um, not asking the questions, but being asked questions. So that's what I was about to say. I was like, it's good to have you on the other side of the lens. Yeah. See, I know. Yeah. So, 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 so that means James, that means James, you got to come on, you got to come on my show and then okay. I can interview you about your stuff. See, so not a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, now where did this, uh, I guess, when you started to actually come in, come into life as being a cartoonist and wanting right. to put this together, like the cartoonist version of you started when? Oh, see, good, great question. See, this is this is why I'm talking to James here. See, I'm going to write down all these questions to you, so I'm not going to ask questions. See, that's a good. So, so basically, the uh, um, I'll give you the abbreviated version of my life is that I am uh, back in 1998. I graduated from art school. My 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 thought was I was going to be a children's book illustrator. I always kind of dreamed of being a children's book illustrator. But it was 1998. For those that don't know, 1998 was the the internet bubble. It was everybody could be a millionaire by just actually getting a dot com address, and you could just be a millionaire. And so what I did as someone had just graduated from art school in St. Louis, um, I did what anybody would do. And that's, that's a pretty obvious answer. You know, I joined the Peace Corps. That's what you do if you're an art, you know, get an art degree. in the UK. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not ready for the real life yet. So I'll go on an adventure. Right. So I ended up. Uh, So what I did, which was, uh, and so this was the advice that, you know, my, uh, my high school art teacher did. He said, listen, you're an artist. Anytime you're actually doing some sort of statement of purpose, or you're doing anything with a resume, or you're doing any type of like um, application process, he says, this is what you need to do. Make a comic book. I'm like, really? Yes. Everybody's getting essays. Everybody's getting college essays. Right. Make a comic book, make a comic book. And then you're gonna, and you're just gonna, uh, um, you'll be remembered. I'm like, all right. So I did that for my, I did that for my college and I got through. Then I did it for my, the Peace Corps. So what I did is I actually made a comic book for my application for the Peace Corps and they, the Peace Corps recruiters, like Peace Corps recruiters, like, yeah, this was, this is fantastic. We've never seen a comic book. This is great. So all of everybody out there that's listening to this podcast, if you are an artist, anytime you're putting in an application for something, yeah, make a comic book you are going to stand out of the crowd. And that's the point is to stand out first and foremost. If you get your foot in the door, then it's all about your, your, your wit and charisma, but to get actually to have someone actually talk to you first and foremost, 
that would be my that's that's my first piece of advice now, so me, what i did is i oh i'm sorry now that? me and you being around close to the same age we know what the peace corps is but to the yeah. audience uh, listening if you could tell them yeah. what the peace corps is so the peace corps is still around the peace yes, corps is. is this yeah the peace corps is still on. so basically for those you basically go overseas and serve for two years it's basically like americorps or teach for america it's basically a volunteer party but it's like the fancy not the fancy one meaning it's like really hard it's not really hard to get into it's uh it might be now i don't think so but it's like basically what it is is that you go overseas do a different country and you actually do volunteer work. So I was a health volunteer hmm. um, and I was there for two years. So basically, and here's the thing. I was in Niger. It's a, it's a country in West Africa. Mm -hmm. I was there for two years. And after two years, I realized at that point, I, I spoke the local language. So if anybody's looking for a tour guide to go to Timbuktu, I speak the local language. They speak in Timbuktu. So there you go. Okay. And, uh, and and by then you kind of know the culture and you, you start to understand things. I'm like, why would you want to leave after this point when you're actually starting to fit in? You know, so I extended for two more years. So I was there for two years. So I was there for four years. So mm -hmm. after four years, I actually ended up... Um, coming back home, you know, and got a grad, got a grad degree. And then I still had that itch to work overseas. Yeah. So then I joined like either international relief organizations. I was at, doctors without borders was one of them. I was working for doctors without borders and, and I was, I was, so chronologically speaking, I was in Pakistan. I was there after the earthquake in 2006. Um, I was in the Philippines doing typhoon relief work mm. uh, for, that was about a year. And then I would spend about a year in South Sudan during their independence movement. Uh, then I was in, I was in Zimbabwe during the cholera outbreak. I was there for, I was there for about a year. Then I was in Uganda working at an HIV clinic for about a year and then it was in Libya during the revolution, uh, repairing ambulances and oh, dodging wow. bullets. After Gaddafi? Yeah. Uh, yeah, during Gaddafi. Yeah. So he was, yeah. So it was during the revolution. So it was, um, he was, I think I was there. I think I showed up like five days after he got um, killed by his, yeah. by his, uh, by Libyans. And, yeah, for those that don't know about that, do not Google it. Um, it's a, it's a, don't, it's a pretty rough video. Yeah. Um, and the, and then after that, I was in. Then I moved to. Then not moved. Then I was in. Uh, I did an urban maternity healthcare clinic in in Nigeria in Lagos. Hmm. So, and that's where James, where I met my wife. So my wife yeah. is Nigerian, and okay. it's it's the same generic story. A hundred people have heard it a million times before. It's about the slightly overweight Vermont cartoonist marries Nigerian runway model. I mean, it's the same, it's a generic story. Everybody's heard it. Um, and and I, what I love about this is like people, it's like we want 90 day fiance. People are like, oh, the 90 day fiance. That would never happen in real life. There's no way anybody, that's all. My wife and I dated for 30 days before we got married because, wow. yeah, well, here's the thing. Yeah, it, well, it was, was. yeah, no, it wasn't a shotgun wedding. It was, uh, it was, I, I married up, man. I mean, she is gorgeous. And so it was, so what I, what I ended up, and she's smart and she had put, she, she puts me right in line. And that's what I, I always wanted. I always just wanted to marry a woman that would just like, you know, you know, you know, keep track of me and keep me in line and, you know, tell mm -hmm. me how it is. And, uh, and well, here, cause yeah, I married up. I mean, she's amazing. And so when we're, when we're walking down, we're walking on the street, people look at it and just, they like, ask her why, what, why it's what's wrong with you. Are you okay? And like, it's like, I'm like and people know why I married her. Um, but here's the thing. We've been married now for 11 years. Uh, we got three right. kids. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. And, but here, here's the thing, James, it's like every relationship's different, but you know, Generically speaking, stereotypically speaking, um, beauty fades. Intelligence can get stagnant. You can get pretty set in your ways, but humor never dies. So that's the thing. It's like the whole Roger Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit thing. And there's it's like, true. What you, you know, I make her laugh. And you know what? And it's humor is I, it, it is the main is the main driving force of the fact that you know that if you can laugh at yourself and um, and keep your wife entertained, it's it's oh, yeah. pure, pure bliss pure bliss so 
Um, and so, so anyway, I mean, you ask your question, how did I get into cartooning? I mean, that's, you know, that's basically it. <laughs> not, yeah, not that, that literally ran the call. Um, so, <laughs> so here's the thing. So I, I, so for your, for your, for your viewers and, and listeners, so I do have, so basically chronologically speaking, I actually have all my, uh, all the, all the books I've done chronologically that you can get also storycomic.com. So mm-hmm. I made one graphic novel called two years, which was about my, it's a it's a it's a sci-fi satire um of you can get it in color but i made these back in um back in 2013 when it was color was wicked expensive yeah. so this was my the book i made about my time in the peace corps it's called two years then i made a, a sequel book called relief which is my time doing international relief work and it's also a, an entire graphic novel as well and then i made a book called lion and dove which is um volume one which is um basically it's about my relationship with um the the continued saga of intercultural marriage so it's about my um it's about it's kind of like a sitcom so basically it's like a right. sitcom where it's 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 funny it's fun but it's the and, story of you and your wife yeah it's about me and my that- wife but we've it's a fictionalized um fictionalized story of of you know our 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 marriage so far so and you know what's really funny, James? She hates it when I call her my ex girlfriend. And I mean, it's, I mean, it's technically true. She's my ex girlfriend. Technically you know? true. So yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and uh, um, she goes, "I'm not your ex girlfriend." I'm like, "You are. You really, truly are my ex girlfriend. You're my yeah. wife now. That's why you're my ex girlfriend. You're my ex girlfriend. The ring yeah. actually solidifies that." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sometimes she hates when I call her my first wife too. She doesn't like that either. But oh. it's um, I mean, but t- technically that's true too. Technically too. that's true too. You know. <laughs> um, and then and like so, I said we got three kids. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, 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 no. You, now, that I'm now, thinking, yeah. essentially, you have. I was going to bring that up. You have three kids, and yeah. you, they got a they got a uh, a mom from Nigeria, and they got a dad who's a cartoonist. Like, what is yeah. what is going on in your household? <laughs> see i know so and it, well here it even gets in it but we I, I i am also the 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 literal um example of the 90s sitcom where you have the goofy slightly overweight husband who marries the beautiful woman and be like that doesn't happen in real life there's no way and like yeah. i said we're actually we are we actually live in we feel like we live in a sitcom because it even gets every better than that not only do we got three goofy kids um, my mother, I, my, my mother babysits. So I got three kids. I got a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old or two girls. And then I have a three-year-old boy. And, and I asked my mother who babysat, um, um, my son one day, I said, so how is his name is Ignatius and his name, we call him Iggy. It's like, how's Iggy doing? And she says, your father is Googling how to get crayon off of a TV screen. So that is, so it's like it's 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 pure chaotic bliss. Right. Plus, my mother-in-law lives with us. It truly is a sitcom here. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. So it's a multi-generational sitcom. And got my my mother-in-law because in Nigeria, when you marry marry you marry the family. Marry the family. So my 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 mother-in-law lives with us, which is amazing. She's got her own section of the house. I hooked up a TV for her. She's got it. She got her own refrigerator. She's got everything all set up. It's kind of like a you know, like an in-law apartment situation. And, um, and, uh, um, it's great that the house sometimes once in a while will smell like utter, I don't know, it's weird, weird stew sometimes they make. And then she's like, do you want some of this? I'm like, no, nah, I'm okay. You know, it's, uh, um, I'll wait for some of like, uh, some of the deep fried, you know, like, you know, like Nigerian cuisines are, are more of to, up to my, like when they make the fried plantains, I'm like, Oh, I'm all about yeah. that, you know, and stuff like that. Not they make the, Nothing thing wrong. with like this nothing wrong it's, it's called stockfish she actually has this fish shipped from nigeria that's like this flash frozen frozen like fish jerky that comes in this giant like an actual like big section of fish with the bones and everything on it they'll peel it off with some okra and the, and it's in there and, the, and she has all these like spices from nigeria that she she has shipped over and it just Man, I tell you, you know what? I love my family. I love my mother-in-law and everything. But you know what? When that's cooking, I'm out of the house. I just, I wait for that smell to kind of, you know, you know kind of leave the room because you know what? It's one of those things that like smells horrible, but tastes good at the same time where like it, right. it confuses the senses. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, and then, and so 
that's basically kind of like you know my my you know my my last what is that to 1998 so that's basically i just sum up the last 25 years for you in like seven minutes you know? and that, that, that was pretty good how you basically summarize that chronologically that was good <laughs> seeing you like that and i and like i have the book i have like the books to show it too yeah, you every, do every step of the it was, way it, there was reference points <laughs> yeah exactly see timestamp. see right there <laughs> absolutely so now we get to 2020 and what essentially did you see that there was a void happening in the world that made you want to create dad jokes it's a good question so um i've talked to other people say it was my covid project this wasn't a covid project this was a result of of as you say, code, like, I, I want us to journey back to the year 2020. So 2020, as much as we think, as much as we think like social media is a cesspool in 2023, um, it was way worse three years ago. It was so mm -hmm. bad. Like, for instance, like you could at least here, like uh, you can curate your own social media feed enough where if you see something that you disagree with, you can eh, block, never mind, never seeing that person again, easy. And you literally never see that person again. And, you know, like, and, and also too, is that you can curate your news feeds to make sure that you just like all the things that you want to see. Like, I'm just making sure I'm watching World of Warcraft videos, dad jokes, and what's happening in, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek. Like, I can just literally make all my news feed and I can see, I can make it so I can never see anything like that is that, that I dis, that I, that I disagree with. Negative. Yes. Right. Right. Exactly. You know what? So back in 2020, like it was, you can accidentally get into a fight with people, but complete by accident. Like you could, for instance, someone post a picture of a, a beautiful sunset, like the, look at this beautiful sunset scent. And then someone posts like seconds later sunsets are caused by air pollution if you love sunsets that means you love air pollution i'm like no that's not what i meant at all mm -hmm. or it's like you know it's yeah. like um oh we're gonna pretty puppy puppies come from puppy bills if you don't support animal shelters you kill dogs no that's not what i no that's not what i meant at all like it was really easy to accidentally get into fights and like it was right, so right, easy right. because you had covid19 we're going through a presidential election you had the george floyd murder there was things that were going on in 2020 that just made it a completely like you know like raw time for everybody oh yeah so what i yeah so what i did is like you yeah, listen i need to make sure that i can do what i because back in 2020 if you wanted to block somebody you had to right click on the name and do this and say i would like to block the person and then or window says have you talked to the person first all these things is like no i don't want peer to. mediation <laughs> yeah it's like exactly it's you know it's just like and then you would then you see things is like your friend just posted this written that you should unfriend them. Like people are just getting fights and like hate you for like being like, like, you know, having a mutual friend with somewhere that you didn't forgot you had. Like it was just, I was a mean, it yeah. was just like a raw time. So what I did, James, is I decided, you know, I'm just going to make my, my neck of the woods. I'm just going to make sure it's safe. every couple of weeks or so I'd post a dad joke before that in 2019, but then I decided to just go full bore in and just post something funny every day. I picked the low hanging fruit first, James. I picked the, you know, you know, things like, you know, what do you call an alligator with a vest on an investigator? Like these were the, these were the easy ones. Like um, what do you call a fear of giants? Fee fi phobia. Like these are the ones that were just super easy. Like I went to a psychic and knocked on the door. She yelled, who is it? So I left like these ones were just, super super easy plateaus so they're, they're the highest form of flattery like these are the easy jokes you could just right. grab those those are on the internet those are those are super easy to to uh um to to grab a hold of um you know would you like to hear a joke about paper never mind it's terrible like tearing see it's a yeah um um right so the, the those were the jokes that were just super easy to pick so i i get those um and i'm, I'm proud to say also is that my i've been doing it now for almost four years and i've every day i post something new and and here's the thing too so the couple things about my book that's actually really unique and james thank you i'm going to say it now that we're recording thank you for backing backing data jokes Absolutely. i appreciate it i sent you a message i said thank you so much you're gonna enjoy I saw it. it so see see i'm, I'm learning so you gotta yeah, yeah. Keep not, it not a lot yeah. of people do that by the way they should they should, you know, it's customer like, but service. But as many Kickstarters as I bet, not a yeah. lot of people thank you for the for the purchase. You more so get an update three months down the line, be like, "Hey, we made it." 
Right. This is what we're doing next. <laughs> right. See, and you got to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so, so the first thing I mentioned is like this is the only fully colored dad joke book I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, probably fully colored book. And so, what the thing is, as I mentioned, I got two daughters and I got a son. Here in our family, there's no such thing as gender specific chores. So, I have in here pictures of things that would be like a daddish thing to do. So you got a camping and then you got uh, a broom because you know what? I clean the floor. Um, you got something on here where you got like, obviously you got to have the random like, um, you know, bar scene. And then you got a, a wood, like a, you know, just kind of like a wood, sh- uh, 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 wood, uh, what am I saying? A woodworking shelf. Right. Uh, lawn, you know what? Dads do laundry. So I got a washing and dryer machine. Then I got a lawnmower. So all these are framed around things that somebody said, oh, my dad does that, you know, fishing or playing you know, mm-hmm. football. And all of those, uh, uh, you know, so James, are like, how do you cut the ocean in half with a seesaw? See, these are just easy. You're like, uh, really? and there's some observations I posted, like lobsters are mermaids to scorpions. Like, that's just one of those things where it's kind of funny. Like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I posted that's more of, of an SAT question. I like that one. See, exactly. Yep, exactly. Um, my wife and I went to a turtle pun class yesterday. It taught us nothing. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> See? Yeah. Um, I just wrote a book about reverse psychology. Do not read it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so, so that's the first thing. They're fully colored. The second thing, which I'm really proud about this book, is all the jokes are 100% safe. Here's the thing. You can buy a dad joke book. You can buy a joke book, but there's always, invariably, there's going to be jokes in there that are a bit misogynistic or mm-hmm. there's going to be a bit racist or there's going to be jokes that just make fun of somebody's um, uh, intellectual disabilities, makes fun of entire class of people, make fun of entire cultures of people. And True. I'm really proud to say that this book is 100% safe. And as I said, my, my six-year-old, she brings it to school. She has a copy of it. Teacher loves it because there's nothing in there that's offensive. Um, my brother who works at a stone quarry has a copy he keeps in his truck and when he's hanging out, you know, eating lunch out of his lunchbox with all of his other men's men, you know, sitting on the side of the wall, um, he'll break it out and read a few jokes and he'll laugh. James, my mother's a minister and she has the book at church. So okay. it is completely, completely, safe completely safe. And granted, my my mother doesn't get the Star Wars jokes in here, um, but, uh, but, you know, like, you know, what should you use with Batman shampoo? conditioner gordon see my mother doesn't get that joke but it's it's still the point of it is is that it's you know what's the best christmas present a broken drum you can't beat it like mm-hmm. these are the jokes that are completely safe so that's the other second thing about this this, this book yeah, james it's completely safe for anyone and the and and this is when it comes down to it, the caveat is is like when you think about giving gifts and this is why i think you will always win the gift giving season when you buy dad jokes and dadder jokes, you can get two, you can get both of them. You will win the gift giving season because when you buy a book of joke books and you buy it from like some other joke book that it might end up having some things that are offensive in there yep. um, or that you might not find offensive, but your, your give might is you're, you're basically telling some, there's two types of gifts you give someone one that you give to someone that you think they will value or you're giving them something that you feel is valued to you that you want to share with them, with right. them. So, you know, for instance, if you give your niece or nephew, here's five bucks. I put it into, um, I, I put it into um, some, like a, a 523, like a, a, you know, put it in for like a investment for you. Yeah. You, you know, a, a t- six-year-old doesn't care about that, but you're giving that to them to have that given that that's the value to you to do. Right. Um, so or your, your, your grandmother or somebody gives you something like, this was your great uncle's. And you're like, okay, it was important for her to give that to you. Right. So that's the two types of gifts. So when you're giving the gift of a joke book, which are great presents, if there's a joke in there that is makes fun of a, a, a class of people or makes fun of, a, a, or makes fun of a, an entire culture of people, you're, you're, you're invariably giving the message of two things. One, that you're saying, you'll find this funny because... Um, uh, you you find this funny and they might not, or they're saying that I find this funny and you might not. That's why this makes this book completely safe. Yeah. You know, and here's the thing, James, I truly believe jokes that um, 
are offensive or is a form of bullying. And I don't think humor needs to be stooped down to that level. To make fun of somebody else and create a culture of an other instead of a we um, yeah. is is not the kind of world that is important for us to live in. And and that is and that's something that I truly believe in and it's something that I and I that I value as um as somebody who who is a father as well. It's um True. the role of the role that I feel is that I really need to make sure that I, you know, it's the role of the parent is to make sure that you create a world that's better for your children, um, a, a, a better world. And, and, it, and I look at my daughters who do not look like they're from Vermont and I I'm heartened. You have to be an optimist when you're, you're raising children. Um, and I truly believe when I see my kids that um, the world belongs to them when they're at my age, that, mm -hmm. that, that the, the world that I'm create, I'm working in my small corner that I'm creating is going to be, it's going to be for them. Um, the third thing that makes this book a little unique is that um, James, I love, I love um, old time radio. I listen to Jack Benny, George, uh, uh, George Burns and Gracie Allen, Groucho sure. Marx, some of these in there, like some of those jokes they put in there, like you, I hear from like that are 80 years old have yeah. disappeared disappeared so what i've been able to do is kind of excuse me i've been able to pull them out from i've been able to pull them out and actually like brush them off and kind of put more of a modern sensibility to them i'll give you one example of one joke that i actually like brought back out it was a charlie mccarthy joke and i tweaked it to make a, a for a, for a modern sensibility and this is the joke is uh i told my wife um that when i was in my 20s i was unbelievably handsome Mm -hmm. And she responded, you're right. I don't believe it. So that joke is, I brought it back. See, right. um, and there's about five, about 5% 5 of the jokes in these books are ones that I actually invented on my own. Um, it doesn't mean I'm smart or it's just the fact that if you're surrounded by it, it's just a play on words. It's not rocket science. It's right. rhyming things. Oh, look, I rhymed, you know, cat with hat. Like it's not, it's, right, it's right. not so it's uh and i'll give you one example of a joke that i invented that i've actually seen in the wild a couple times and i invented this back in late 2019 and it was a pre-covid and as as we mentioned at the top of the hour i'm from i'm from vermont i live in vermont vermont's a rural state and it's rural enough where you actually you see deer mm -hmm. um so it's common enough to see deer, but it's rare enough to see a deer that you would actually would mention it. Like, oh, okay, that's that's cool. Um, like, oh, look a deer, that kind of thing. And I was dropping my uh, I was dropping my kiddo off at school, and on the way there, we saw a deer, you know, you know, leap across the road. And I came back home, you know, and I told my wife, I said, hey, you know what? I saw a deer on the way to school today. And she looked at me. And she goes, how do you know it was going to school? And I stopped and I said that's really funny. <laughs> like, right, right. So I actually, I tweaked that joke and you can actually, that's in the wild. Now I've seen it pop up a couple of times where people would post it uh -huh. and like on Twitter or something like, and I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that like, I, I, I brought that joke out and I've seen it in the wild a couple of times. So, cause it's funny. Cause it's almost like an homage to, there's an old Groucho Marx joke where Groucho Marx said, Groucho Marx said, um, you know, I shot an elephant in this, but I shot an elephant in my pajamas this morning. How I got my pajamas, I'll never know. Like, that's like an old right. Groucho Marx joke, but that's what it's kind of like. So those are the four things, James, that make this book. So when you back it, what makes it very unique is those four things. One, fully colored. Two, completely safe for anyone to read. Three um, is uh, uh, bringing back old old jokes from the night from from 80 years ago and for yeah. some very actually like jokes that you're not going to find in other joke books that are in yeah because like, for nostalgia purposes i was going to bring up the fact that like most of the stuff that i was that was re that i was reading and mm -hmm. some of the satire that I was bringing out brought me back to uh the 80s cracked magazines mad magazines yeah. and like mad libs which were like yep. hilarious bringing those to school writing them out and then reading them to a bunch of friends yeah exactly so, like you, you get the you get the noun the person place or thing you start and the thing is the person has no idea what the story means at all you you haven't even read it to them right. and then building it out and then you actually read it to them be like 
we sound like idiots. Mad Libs were hilarious. Yeah, I love Mad Libs. You can, I, I, I should get that. I should. Yeah, man, I haven't done a Mad Lib in a long time. Yeah, Mad Libs, can, are, I thought there's an app. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's different it's, though. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's almost like a printed workbook, and it's and right. it's a way for you if you're young to build up nouns, like almost the pronunciation right. of words. What's an adverb? What's a noun? Uh, what's a verb? Like, give me a verb. And then all of a sudden right. you're, you're 10 years old and you're like, Oh, a verb. Okay. Uh, run. Yes. Right. Oh, and you're doing this like with a kid and you're not even realizing like you're picking up pronunciation and you're picking up like the way that you're pronouncing things right. because it, this is the way you were taught it in school. Right. And then all of a sudden yeah. you, you just made a joke and you had no idea you created it. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. Now the Mad Libs were hilarious. Those were really fun, and like you said, there's an educational aspect to that. There too. is, yeah. yeah our teacher yeah. Used to give them to us all the time, and we had no idea what she was doing. We just thought we were making like a joke book, but mm -hmm. it was teaching us at the same time. Right. Yeah. Yep. Man, I tell you, see, yeah, yeah. But but even um, I guess even in the correlation of you bringing this book together in 2020. There was even YouTube channels that were dedicated to dad jokes. There's a dad right. jokes YouTube channel. Like I looked that up. Uh, there's other ones. Uh, I think it's a uh, Yeah Mad All uh, All Deaf Digital and Dad Jokes, the actual YouTube channel, which have nothing but dad jokes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they they're almost an elimination tournament style. I love it, watching those. You really laugh at it. Laugh yeah. at each other. Right. Yeah. It's like a group of like eight of them, and then right. if you laugh at the joke, you're knocked out. Almost in that type of fashion. Right. Yeah. There's a, and here's the thing too. And this is the other thing, James. So like we have, I have set up here because as, as we mentioned before, so it's fully funded. Mm -hmm. So if we reach our first stretch goal, I'm going to add another hundred jokes to it. Cause it's right. It's 500 jokes in the book. So it's, and if you're looking at backing, getting the first book and the second book, that's over a thousand jokes that are unique and safe to read. So that's pretty fun. So if we can reach our first goal, it'll be all about another hundred jokes. So it'll be, so it'll be six over 600, 600 jokes. It'll be an extra 20 pages or so. Oh. So it ended up being almost, cause these books, these books come out to about 140 pages. So it ended up being a rank almost 160 pages or so. And so if you're able, we're able to, but then there, I'm really excited about if we make it like their next stretch goal, which is 1500, we do that. It's called a deluxe data joke book, which I'm really excited about because I actually am going to put on there um, a lot more like, you know, unique art to it. But also I'm going to be able to put on there um, the history of the dad joke. I'm actually working on that. Do you know what? This is really interesting, James. The history of the dad joke is that the first time somebody actually actually, actually used the word in pop, popular culture dad joke was in 1987. And it was written as a op-ed piece in the... Gettysburg Gazette or something along those lines. And it, it was an op-ed piece in, in 1987. Mm. And it was said, um, you know, something about, um, you know, give don't, you know, give credit to the dad joke or something like that. Because right. here's the thing. This is my working theory right now is that the dad joke is, if you think about, you know, like the, uh, the like the, uh, like a family tree, like the trunk of where we are now in modern society I really believe where it starts off with the dad joke. So let me tell you why. Here, here it is. Pre-1987, think about it, mid-80s to earlier, to the to the early 80s, to the 70s, to the 60s, the role of the father on movies and television and everything was always that of the, and even commercials, was that of the stoic and wise role. Yeah. You were always serious. The role of the father was always somebody who was serious. If sometimes if you, you had that. men, right. If you had men, if there, if there's a male character in there who wasn't a father, he could be goofy. They could be fine. He could be funny and stuff like that. But the role of the father figure, if you think of like the 1950s and sixties, you know, you know, you know, ask your, you know, make sure you ask your husband and say what kind of coffee he wants, because he knows, you know, that stuff is like, you know, it's like always a father was the one that uh -huh. actually imparted the wisdom at the end of the episode or does something along those yeah. lines. Father knows the best. Father was, the Waltons. That stuff. Yes. Even think about the Waltons and even think about happy days. And then you yeah. think about as you get further in and it wasn't until around 86, 87, 88 at that time. There was started to be a crack in it, and it comes down to the idea of, like, say, the Cosby Show with Bill Cosby, yeah. who is 
um, was a comedian at the time, but he played the role of a father. So he was a little goofy, but he was mostly serious. He was mostly the guy who actually like imparted yeah. the wisdom. He was there. And then yeah. you saw things like Full House, where you had Danny Tanner. What's that? Yeah, three guys, uh, the dad, and it, it, was it uh two two people were basically like his best friends, but they end up being uncles to all the kids. No yep. mom, and they're right. all right. Yeah, and so here's the thing. So the Danny Tanner was always the straight man, meaning he was he had goofy qualities, but he wasn't funny. Like to be funny, he was like I know I need everything clean, and he's like oh that's funny, but it was always um it was Uncle Jesse. And his friend Joey got to be the funny ones because they weren't the dads. So it was around that team. And then right when Family Matters came out as well, Family Matters, um, the father was very, very serious the first few seasons. But then he started getting into the early 90s where all of a sudden, because uh, because that lasted for, I think, nine, eight or nine seasons, Family, family Matters did. He was becoming more and more goofy because – the biggest, like, hugest turning point was when fam when uh, Home Improvement came out, where all of a sudden the dad was straight on funny. That's when it happened. Is like, as soon as that happened, and this is this is my working theory. You think about the time of like the late eighties to early nineties is when the Gen X generation, the earliest part of the Gen X generation, were starting to get into their twenties because. Um, um, 1966 is the first point of when people st could started to be Gen X. That was the year, 19 it was 1966. Fast forward 20 years, that's 1986. So around that time, you had you had the greatest generation, which was a generation during World War II, gave birth to the baby boomers. And then the baby boomers, then the baby boomers gave birth to the Gen Xers. The baby boomer generation started to be able to show it's okay to like, you know, pop culture things. Um, my father, uh, we didn't know for years that my father had a train set. He never put it out. He was almost kind of ashamed that he kept the train set, but it was important to him. But we didn't know that because he had to be a dad. And, and so, but then like the Gen Xers were that generation. When I was a kid, I had baby boomers. When I went to the comic book shop, there was guys in their thirties in the 1980s. They would go to the comic book shop. And for those that don't know this, comic books were given to you in a paper bag, almost like it was like they oh, yeah. didn't want to be seen with comic books. So they had to put them in a brown paper bag to walk out with them because they didn't want to be seen buying comic books. <laughs> um, you know, it's yeah, it was it was it was so it was at that time where there was almost like a shame to actually like like things you liked when you were a kid. So what happened was, so, you know, circa, you know, like early nineties, then all of a sudden dads were able to be goofy on, in pop culture. Once that happened, that's when the dad jokes started to be way more prevalent because the dad jokes is a, is a response to allowing fathers to have a personality, allowing father figures to actually like be funny. And here's the thing about dad jokes, dad jokes, have a sense of wisdom to them because they're witty and they're playing on words. So there is a sense of observation, not necessarily observational humor, but a wit and a response and a play on words and puns and one-liners, which in itself is humor is a sense of intelligence about that. So there is, there is that. So once the father was able to be goofy then it would then it allowed it 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 at first it put the crack in the nuclear family um the 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 concept of a nuclear family where you have a father and a mother because then once you break apart the foundation of what a father needs to be and take that apart then it allowed then it allowed to allow mothers to be head of households it allowed you know mothers to be breadwinners it allowed there to be you know, uh, multifaceted and 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 genders of anything as what a family it could be. It allowed family to be defined by what people feel as though is the the people that love them is different, and and that's why. And then once that happened, and you're able to do that, then there became an idea of like, you know what, it's okay to read comic books. You know what, hey, you know what, it's okay to yeah. play video games in your 40s because you know why and that's why i really believe this is my working theory james is like foundationally the spark that started that that whole thing about about um dissecting and breaking apart this idea of like a of a of a of a, what a, a traditional family is 
came down to the idea of allowing the dad to actually have a personality and do that. And, and that's what I love about it. And that's, and, 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 and the piece of it too, just being a dad myself, what I love about the dad joke is you're telling your kids it's okay to be embarrassed. It's okay to say doing something embarrassing. It's okay to be funny. It's okay to put yourself in the spotlight. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to um, be proud of the things you love. Uh, and all that stuff comes down to this being the having the unabashed, um, the, the, the unabashed um uh, were to be vulnerable and embarrassing at the same time. And, and really it comes down to the ideas. Like, that's why I think that the, the, the cultural milestone of what Gen Xers are able to give to the society is, you know, truly is the dad joke, James. That's what I love about it. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I definitely believe that a hundred percent. Now, when the, when the reception for the first book came out, um, how was that? Well, it was interesting. So I was able to, when it came out, I was able to uh, present it. I was at the White House at the time when I presented it. Um, and uh, it, it was, you know, I went to Madison Square Garden and I did a whole big thing. Of, no, I'm kidding. It was fun. <laughs> it was good. It was, yeah. So it was, it was good. A lot of people picked it up. I had, you know, some, you know, you know, so there's some good reviews on Amazon about it. Um, obviously I was able to, you know, sell sell a lot of copies of it i'm just really and also highlighting the the importance of um what made this book different um and and also it's and being able to now sit back and actually put together a second volume of it dadder jokes um is has been it's been fantastic it's been so fun and i've been able to also uh and I, i've been able to also too is just to kind of really kind of you know, embrace this idea of the fact that obviously, James, there's going to be a third book called Dadist Jokes because you already have dad, dad, or you're going to have dadist. So that's obviously going to happen. Um, I'm already, I already already got halfway through, you know, some, you know, some jokes, all jokes and puns already because I say they come, I do them every day and I do a lot of research and, and finding them. And it's, uh, it's, it was almost like people, bought it and there was like a relief knowing that there's something um there's still some there's still some good in the world you know and making sure that you're able to provide something some levity um especially, to folks as well especially yeah. the thought and like putting them together because like i said like you said before you, you're trying to be on the safe safe side of, of, of putting these things together so there's right. a part in even creating a joke just an just aspect Oh, sorry, you cut out for a second. Um, uh, it, it, there's actually a fun part in creating a joke. Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's uh, and and the best part about it is that uh, because they are so fleeting, that mm -hmm. if they're not funny, not in the funny as in like they're they're mean, but just like they don't. Some of them just don't land as well, uh, and people forget about them because then they'll go on to the next one. So it's not, that's the best part about, you know, creating jokes or putting them together or curating them is somebody will find them funny. And I put some jokes out where I was like, yeah, this one isn't going to land. And all of a sudden it got shared like 20 times and it's got like, you know, 200 likes. And I'm like, really this one, this one's funny. Like it was like the ones that are just really like times you never cool pure corn like i'm like you're thinking wow okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. democrat uh, demographic right outside of your own uh right. your your own friend group to find out that somebody in missouri like they really get that joke <laughs> right exactly yeah like you know uh have you heard about the chocolate record player <laughs> It sounds pretty sweet. Like these are, stupid. I mean, it's like, it's like, and those are some of the ones that like get shared all the time. Like, uh, um, <laughs> now, now necessarily because it's dad jokes, do you think that the demographic changes on like the people that purchase it or is it something because you, you've, you've ac actually been, been able to like give this out to anyone. And like right. you said, you have it, your mother has it. She's a minister. Uh, and, yep. and there's a total nuance of people and and doesn't even matter who they are, but do you find that there's a specific demographic that have purchased the book? 
a, I see a lot of people will buy it as a gift for a gift. Um, okay. That's the thing. It is a great gift. And, and this is the thing I was saying, like at the beginning of the hour, if you buy this for somebody, you will win. You will win gift giving. Like you will say, people are like, this is, this is, this is hilarious because it, it goes for everywhere. You can put it on your coffee table. You can put it next to your bed. You can keep it next to, you can keep it next to anything. You can just have that book. You can have it in your car. There's so many things in there that just makes it so easy to just grab a hold of and do it. Um, you know, I went to the paint store to get thinner. It didn't work. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what? Today is International Waffle Day. I can't decide if I want to participate or not. Oh. <laughs> See, a room full of these. Yeah, man. It's a creative team behind dad jokes and dad jokes, aside from you. Just, well, me. Yeah, just me. Um, the uh, yeah, so there is uh the dadder jokes, I actually reached out. So if you go like you've done Kickstarter, I have, because um, I've been doing a podcasting for a while, I've been very fortunate enough to connect with people who are really talented. I was able to connect with um, three of my previous guests who are artists. And um, the first one was Brian Ballinger. And he is a, an award-winning children's book author and artist um, who has his own um, literary agent even. So, and he does, he paints murals, um, I, somewhere, um, C- Cincinnati, one of the big Ohio, uh, no, Indianapolis, Indiana. He, he's done a lot of murals. You can't go into Indianapolis without seeing some of his, wow. um, artwork and painting on, on, he painted the side of a, um, a parking garage that was actually in the national news about it. So he, I asked him, I said, Hey, can you, uh, can I hire you to do one of my variant covers? She's like, um, yeah, of course. So I hired him to do that. I also hired um, uh, uh, Mark Gagne, who is also uh, a nationally known, um, has a literary agent as well, um, a children's book creator as well. And he's done artwork for uh, image comics and, and dark horse comics. And I asked him if he could do a couple uh, covers. So he did one for my, he did one for dad jokes a variant cover for dad jokes and he did a variant cover for dad or jokes and his artwork looks like the kind of artwork you would find like at like a bookstore like at barnes and noble his stuff is like beautifully beautiful graphic design and the third person i had is the uh incom- incomparable dirk stanley this guy um i don't know when he sleeps james he is always up he is he has a very unique art style that kind of looks like something from adventure time and he uh but he started his artwork is his stuff that came out before adventure time he has made um i think over 15 fully colored um role-playing game books like he made he created his own role-playing game tabletop role-playing game called far away land and he's done all the artwork for it he's done all the stuff for it he is uh and he like i said he has like 15 like full-on 220 plus page source books for his this world that he's created so i asked him to see if he could come in and do a um uh, a cover for me as well because here's the thing james you know this pick stars you got to do variant covers yeah so and that's what i did so i have the the three of them that have been Today. super happy to have them help well, me out with that they always say you got to have a little bit more bang for your buck yeah, that's right see exactly you got to keep it up yep has it was like everybody has like something unique it was like oh by the way there's an accompanying soundtrack to this comic book yes yeah and there's t-shirts yeah i get that part as well and, <laughs> oh there's there's a foil copy to this comic book aside from the regular standard covered copy that you would normally receive yes Yes. See, exactly. And we had, and I was really happy. I was actually good also on my, uh, is that I have um, some of the add-ons I actually created bookmarks too. The cool thing about these bookmarks, James, they almost look like they're like, like church or Bible verses because there's a picture of a, like, a, like trees and there's pictures of like, you know, things makes it look very pretty and stuff. And it's written in cursive. It's all dad jokes. Like I just made like, um, there's like 16 dad jokes you can buy, like the PDF version of them. You can print out at like $2 each. Um, the other ones are like, you can get the physical copies that are well done, you know, printed out and stuff um, for like, I think eight bucks each. 
Um, and here's the thing too, for those that want, there's a fire sale on my, for s over 630 pages of graphic novel uh, is for five bucks for 640 pages of graphic novels. That's in the add-on section. Mm. I also have on there uh, for five bucks, uh, the PDF versions of all that as well. And, and that would be in full color. So this is just, um, yeah, I have this as uh, um, back stock, basically. I'm not, I'm not printing these anymore. So, and those are available. So Definitely. yeah, that, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And like you say, James, it's like, I learned that from talking to other podcasters, you mean like other people doing Kickstarters, you got to make sure it's, you're keeping it fresh. So, yeah. So I, I figured you've been doing this a while. And and of course, before before we go, I, I figured I'd try my hand at this. So I, I wrote down a, a few that I found online. I just wanted to see how they yeah. would over for you. Okay. If, okay. Um. Uh, so uh, what is it? Uh, can you believe that Salt and Pepper have been performing together for over 35 years? So I guess you could say that they're seasoned musicians. <laughs> Hey, that's good. There you go. <laughs> They're like, uh, why is your mom's sister so good at poker? Well, they're always up in her auntie. <laughs> that, or uh, did you hear about the guy that bought all the bodegas in Harlem? I guess he got the corner market market cornered. <laughs> See, look at that, man. Those were good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh, why is the pork shop always nervous to go to the cookout because he's always getting grilled yeah see <laughs> oh, they just they, they uh, some people call them corny jokes and for us dads it's just a way of highlighting us in our own little little way <laughs> right see yeah 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 pure corn i love it those are good man yeah how come MC Hammer didn't uh, die in a plane crash? He was wearing parachute pants. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He says that those are good. Yeah, keep it fresh. Yeah. See, I'm gonna have to have you put I'm gonna have to have a whole section of just like you know, you know, James's dad jokes in my in the third installment. Look, some of those I picked apart from, from other people, so that most of them are not mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay that's the thing it's all it's, it's curated they're curated see so yeah and i appreciate that but barney this has been a great talk uh, i appreciate the the fact that you've had a um had a, a had a shock in your life to where you wanted to basically just bring a little bit more joy into the world and by doing it you would provided yourself into bringing it into the form of jokes for everybody to read not only in one volume but in the second volume that's now live on Kickstarter now. So thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me on, James. This has been a genuine pleasure. No problem, man. So uh, for James Grandmaster Facts Boys, Barney Smith, uh, Dadder Jokes is still live on Kickstarter with a couple weeks left. So everybody, please go out there and get that. And for uh, for us at the Facts Project, we are out. Mm -hmm.